everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're back down in the water, I've got my wetty on and well recently I lost my shaft and my spear gun so I decided to do something different and take out my old pole spear. Now I haven't used this in a while and I sharpened the tips to make them proper, properly sharp again. So let's see if I can get something with this. It's only about seven feet long, uh, aluminium, quite a heavy spear so Hopefully it packs a punch to something. Most I'm gonna be looking around in the cracks, trying to find some wrasse, see if I can like, kick a wrasse with this move two wrasse. Um, maybe some pollock if I'm lucky, cold fish, scorpion fish, so you know I like those. Just anything, if you see anything legal, I'll see if I can take it and cook something up for you guys. But yeah, let's get in the water. I'm dying to get it right now. It's super flat, it's super clean. It's a lovely day. And I'll see you out there. Okay, so the pole spear was a lot harder than I anticipated and I missed Pollock after Pollock after Pollock. After missing a fair few fish, I started to get used to the limited range of the pole spear. So it was time to go down again and see what I can find. Dropping down to the bottom, I do a few grunts and calls. No more pollock come in. So I look to my left and there's a few rats scattered around. So the structure here is perfect. So I make my approach sticking to the bottom using the rocks and close the gap on the biggest rats of the shoal. After getting the first fish on the stringer, I was getting a lot more confident with the pole spear. So it was time to look for something a little bit bigger. I'm looking around, I'm grunting. There's no pollock coming in, but I do see this lovely wrasse. And this wrasse is about three pounds. So making a very, very careful approach, I try to close the gap on this fish. I managed to put in a near perfect shot and I hit him just in his spine. So all five prongs broke his spine and he wasn't able to swim away. When you hit a fish like that, it is a race against time. So you need to go and swim as fast as you can and secure that fish. On this drop, I see a lovely male kakuras, and it, a, ma a big male kakuras has been on my hit list for a while. So I see this one approach me, and I'm <laughs> about to shoot when I look in the distance and I see the same species of ras, but a lot bigger. So I get greedy and I let this one swim by, hoping that the big one just comes straight towards me and I'm able to close the gap. But unfortunately, I don't get the smaller one and the bigger one is too smart so he doesn't come in and I'm left with nothing on this dive. I decided to scale the fish already had on my stringer in the water. I did this for a couple of reasons. One, I find it makes the scales come off a lot easier if you do it in the water. But two, I also hoped that a cloud of scales would bring in something a bit better, maybe a pollock or a cold fish or whatever, but unfortunately it didn't and all it did was attract a lot of small fry. Going down on the bottom, I'm trying to look for something a bit more valuable, but nothing comes in. So I look to my right and there is another ass. Closing the gap on this ras, I take a perfect shot hitting him right in the head, stoning him. Now I already have, this is my third rasp, so I don't need any more and since this is my last dive of the season that should last me for a good couple of months in the winter. 
later on during the session, I borrow my dad's gun just to hope that maybe I can shoot something that's not coming in close enough for the pole spear. Maybe a pollock that's hanging under the distance or a cold fish or whatever. I do see this female kakuras. Now the females are bright red compared to the blue and orange one we saw earlier. Kakuras also have to be within 23 centimeters, so this one was well over the limit. Going down for my final drop of the day, I have enough fish, so I'm going down just for the sake of seeing there's anything around. And I noticed this small whiting, and I hardly ever see real whiting on the water, but I see this one, and he's too small to shoot, and he's running, swimming away from me anyway. But I'm um, mesmerized by this little whiting, and I look up, and it's just a wall of coal fish, and they're the big coal fish too. I missed my first time, but I'm remaining calm. I reload, the shoal disperses, but then groups together again. So I decide to be a bit more patient and try and get a bit closer. I get closer, I let my spear go, and I hit one that just tears right off. It must have been only three prongs went into the full five, and that's just the reality of using a pole spear. You won't land the fish 100% of the time. To cook this RAS recipe, you will need your Ballon RAS fillets, bottle of white wine, a whole knob of butter, double cream, and spring onions. Firstly, you want to melt the whole knob of butter in your pan. When the butter is already bubbling, you can add your fillets in, or like how I did, I also cut them into pieces and then added them onto the pan. But keep them skin side down for now. Next, you wanna crack open your bottle of wine and pour yourself half a glass. Add in your half a glass of wine and then flip the fish over. So the skin side is now facing up the way. Chop up your spring onions and then add them to the mix. Open up your double cream and then pour it around the whole pan. Serve on a plate and you have a really tasty Ballon Ras fillet. Next, we're gonna do the Kakuras. For this, all you'll need is some garlic, about three cloves depending on the size, and some butter. Start by finely chopping up all your garlic cloves. Next, you're going to need to make about two to three scores on the fish on both sides. Stuff the inside of the fish with some garlic and then fill all the scores you've made up with garlic as well.
add onto a hot pan a chunk of butter to melt down. When the butter is melted, you can go ahead and add your fish. When the underside is done, just take two forks and flip the fish over to cook the other side. And there you have a delicious cooked kakuras. Okay, so I've got my finished kakuras here. It's looking great, it's all golden, brown. The meat looks cooked, it's fleshy. Let's try it. Bit of rasp. Mm -hmm. That's really good to be honest. It tastes slightly different than balan rice. It's got more of a flavor in it. It's a bit more sweet, and the garlic gives it that extra bit of flavor, and it is really good. Skin. Mmm. Such a good eating fish. No, oh, it's awesome. I'm gonna finish all this fish because it's my breakfast after all, but. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe for more content coming up, and I'll see you guys in the next one.